Greetings from Western Australia. My name is Andre, and uh, many thanks for the opportunity to share our exciting developments of biochar rich road pavements and construction materials that has been developed during the last few years. The anionic emulsion based technology uh, started out in Africa in the early 2000s as a cold premix that was used for new road installations as well as maintenance repair in remote and rural parts of Africa, specifically for the mines. The base technology included the use of carbonaceous shales uh, or coal fines um, as a raw material together with standard aggregates. Three years ago, we switched over to the use of biochars and chars as well as carbon black um, for production plants in Malaysia, Thailand and Vietnam. With the introduction of the new product lines in Australia, we now can get in excess of 170 tons of biochar into one kilometer of roads. We love the opportunity now to show you how. Here with just a quick overview on how we classify the different types of carbon containing material that goes into the product. Currently we source the majority of our biochar needs from the farming communities, um, but uh, lately a number of pyrolysis based power generation plants also stepping up to the market. The cost of biochar out the gate is obviously a huge factor, but uh, later on in the presentation I will describe how we got around that hurdle. We also use chars from the torrefaction in the, um, industry um, for predominantly for higher duty road systems, uh, purely based on the better physical properties of char versus biochar. We can also use carbon black from the tire pyrolysis industry, but that normally requires a few extra environmental controls during manufacture. This is a montage of road pavement, stabilization, wearing course materials that all contain biochar contents between 5 and 10 percent. We now also apply the same mixed design technologies to concrete wastes, brick fines, concrete slurries, baghouse filter fines, and lately also all the pandan soils from the outback areas of Western Australia. This is the standard equipment that is normally used for soil stabilization by foaming bitumen and Portland cement combinations. We utilize the same equipment uh, with an anionic emulsion and biochar. 5% biochar addition will equate to more than 150 tons of biochar consumed per kilometer of road, two lanes wide. We have in the past successfully tested material up to 25% biochar content. We also add up to 15% of biochar to the road wearing courses um, together with the standard road aggregates. Uh, but in general, at this stage, due to costing, we limit the additions to 5%. 
On the left hand side is a classic installation of roads installed on wine farms and on the right is maintenance repair work right on the east coast of Australia in Townsville. At the rate that rainforests are being destroyed and bushfires burning of savannas, we are losing the race to sequestrate carbon. Mother Earth is desperate for an alternative. The ever-increasing industrial revolution and infrastructure development is an ideal vehicle to lock down carbon at exponential rates to save our future. For current biochar applications, there are many and extremely complex life cycle analysis methodologies uh, and they are often disputed. If we put biochar into construction products, theoretically, they, the biochar is now locked down for thousands of years and not hundreds. This can have a huge positive impact for slowing down and reversing the current heating of Earth. The bulk of current biochar production currently starts with clean feedstocks to produce a clean biochar that is suitable for agricultural application or animal feedstocks, etc. With our anionic emulsion-based technology, we actually can use not-so-clean biochar and still produce a final product with no leaching and no permeability and no contamination to the environment. We should seriously look at large-scale pyrolysis of municipal wastes, household wastes, as commercially viable sources to produce biochar for the construction industry. So why biochar for roads and construction, and what are the hurdles? The cost of biochar out the gate is most likely the biggest handbrake. In the past, extensive work has already been done getting small quantities of biochar into hot premix. But the cost of biochar versus standard aggregates is a big problem for the hot mix industry. Combining biochar with our special anionic emulsions and creating a different type of bonding mechanism, we see far superior performance properties with our cold premixes. With the improved resilient and tensile modulus properties, we can actually use less than half the amount of material compared to hot premix for a same duty road installation. We can therefore include higher priced raw materials into our mixes and still be competitive. For that reason, the use of biochar in our road products has become the norm and we are continuously developing ways to further increase the amount or quantity of biochar that can be used in the road construction industry. This slide is a typical indication of the enhanced performance properties obtained combining our anionic emulsion with biochar. The top right bar chart indicates the indirect tensile modulus strengths developed by taking a road based material and treating it with foaming bitumen stabilization plus 
half a percent of Portland cement. The bottom right is the biochar rich mix uh, made with anionic emulsion, no Portland cement, resulting in 40% better indirect tensile modulus properties. The significant part is after a three day cured and soaked analysis, the material maintained nearly 100% of its indirect tensile modulus strength. On the top left, with flexural modulus test work, we prepared fatigue beams and a new test method to compare the old versus new technology. A factor four to five times better performance was realized. The bottom left shows the loss of 50% elasticity with the standard foaming bitumen technology combined with Portland cement reaching 50% loss after 100,000 cycles. The biochar rich sample managed to get up to 500,000 cycles before 50% elasticity was lost. So purely from a performance point of view, there's a huge incentive to include biochar in road and construction products. In order to make a biochar rich road product, we follow three stages. First step is clean water, bitumen at temperature, received from the refineries, a pH adjuster, all the emulsifiers and stabilizers, UV inhibitors, etc. go in with that and we produce an emulsion. The emulsion cools down to ambient temperature and are stored in tanks for up to six months. The next step of the process is to add road aggregates, carbon blacks, biochars. We also do processed waste with the necessary filler powders and a short mix in a twin screw pock mill gives us the final product all at temp ambient temperature. If the final product is packed into LDPE bags we realize a shelf life of up to two years which gives us the opportunity to export currently to 14 different countries from a number of production plants in Asia and Australia. Packed in one ton bulker bags we have up to six months shelf life and as loose bulk on a tipper lorry you can travel for 14 days and still install a permanent new road. Installation is done with lightweight equipment, uh, minimizing transport logistic costs and associated greenhouse gas emissions. And in general, the material has much higher or better performance with no cracking, no creeping, no heat during the whole manufacturing or installation process. Uh, we don't see leaching. There's no solvents used. We normally do not require tack or binder coat uh, installations. And material that's not used can be stored for use at a later time. So no waste. This is one of the installations done in Myanmar. Uh, totally manual, they did not have paving machines, um, material is easy to work with, it's not sticky, it's not tacky. Uh, compaction was done with the only roller available in the area and it resulted in a 14 kilometer road that does not wash away in the monsoon, monsoon rain seasons. These installations were done in East Malaysia, up on the border between Sarawak and Kalimantan, Indonesia. And a few thousand tonne of material was installed for the military directly onto their existing 
rural roads, no takeout, and also withstanding the harsh monsoon weather conditions. Due to the ease of installation, we could do up to four kilometers of road in one day versus standard hot premix applications in remote areas normally taking a few days per kilometer. Our biochar rich materials are also used in very remote locations on the left hand side, Africa, in Cameroon, uh, centerpiece top was the product qualification trials for the Malaysian government in Kuala Lumpur. Um, bottom middle was some patchwork done at the international airport in, uh, in Nepal, Kathmandu, with the far right top showing coast coastal road installations in Timor-Leste, and bottom right some runway installa airport runway installations in Mozambique. This slide shows installations in Thailand, uh, and the product was actually produced not using biochar, but using carbon black from the tire pyrolysis industry. The high carbon content in the material made it possible for us to thin down layers to 15 millimeters on a quarry feeder road. And today, after more than four years of service, the road still does not show any cracking, creeping or leaching. Together with biochar, we also utilize ferrocrete and laterites with reduced quantities of iron oxide to install special surfaces for bus lanes, bicycle tracks, running tracks in Australia. Lately, we also include up to 10% biochar with desert soils, pindan soils for road stabilization as well as waterproofing and dust control. This eliminates the transport of quarry aggregates to remote areas, resulting in huge cost and emission savings. These installations in South Australia, Adelaide area, actually contained more than 12% biochar content and it was also the certification installations we had to do in order to be endorsed by the Department of Transport and Industry. These are the photo montage of the previously shown video for soil stabilization or road-based soil stabilization um, containing more than 5% biochar 200 millimeters thick. This equates to more than 150 tons of biochar locked down per kilometer of road, two lanes wide. This last slide is just a few examples of current R&D developments and uh, we do modified biochars infused with our special emulsions creating lightweight mass, binder mass, that can be used in remote areas for construction. Uh, we utilize waste from the concrete and cement industry, and then also some color variations that all contain micronized biochar and devulcanized tire rubber. I thank you very much for the opportunity and look forward to any questions. Have a good day.